Hey, feeling good, like I should. When in the walk around the neighborhood. Hey, you guys, it's Lily. So, literally, like 15 seconds ago, I just had it laid on my heart to make a video. So, I grabbed my tripod really quick and set it up. And I have my Bible in front of me. And I'm just going to share with you guys some things that God has laid on my heart recently. Sorry if it looks like I'm crying. Uh, my contact messed up. So, perfect. One of my main New Year's resolutions this year was to quit putting people and objects and things in my life before Jesus. Because um, he should be number one in my life. So I've really been trying to get in his word more and spend more time just journaling and writing down my prayers and being intentional in everything I do, not just reading one verse and saying that's good enough. And I'm not saying it's bad to read one verse. Um, sometimes I take one verse and like meditate on that verse and just really go into detail about it. Uh, but sometimes I'll say, I'm just going to read a verse and I skim over it. And for about five seconds, I'm like, wow, that is so good. And then I go right back to my day, right back to all my stress and my anxiety of my day. For me, I do best when I take a side time in my day, not just on my phone, but to really get out the Bible because it's so easy whenever you're looking on the bible app to just go to instagram or get a notification and go to those things instead of being in the bible and i love the bible app personally like that is such a great resource but for me a physical bible helps me more so starting off the new year me and my grandma uh watched the movie uh overcomer and it was so good and in the movie um Priscilla Shire is the main character I'm not gonna give away anything but she gives advice um to go in the book of Ephesians in the Bible and just look at the first two chapters and write down everything that God says you are so I just want to read a little bit from that chapter and then tell you guys what I got out of it and I'm not going to be reading the whole thing, just like parts that really jumped out at me. But I really encourage you guys to go do this yourself. And uh, the words just really jump off the page at you, or at least they did for me. It says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. Even as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and blameless before him. I'm just going to start right there. It says that God chose us in him before the foundation of the world that we should be holy and blameless before him. So before this universe was even set into place, God had you in mind. He knew that you were going to do great things for the kingdom of God. If only you allow him to move in your life. In love, he predestined us for adoption to himself as sons through Jesus Christ, according to the purpose of his will. So he had predestined for us to be in his kingdom and for us to be one of his children because you are a child of God. God created you to be a light in this world and to spread his name so that others can know the truth and the peace that God brings that only Christ can bring in him alone. To the praise of his glorious grace with which all he has blessed us in the beloved. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses according to the riches of his grace. So God has redeemed us and forgiven us. And we don't deserve any of this. But because of the blood that Jesus shed on the cross, we are worthy, but only through him. In him we have redemption through his blood and the forgiveness of our trespasses according to his riches and grace, which he lavished upon us in all wisdom and insight, making known to us the mystery of his will according to his purpose, which he set forth in Christ. As a plan for the fullness of time to unite all things in him, things in heaven and things on earth. In him we have obtained inheritance, having been pre predestined according to the purpose of him who works all things according to the counsel of his will. In him you also, when you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and believed in him, were sealed with the promised Holy Spirit, who is the guarantee for our inheritance until we acquire possession of it to the praise of his glory. I think that is just so good. And that's not even, that's like half of the first chapter. And this is a relatively short book. It's just, it's only six pages, but it's six pages of pure truth. Every word is just so good and so well thought out. And one thing that I just thought was so amazing was that Paul wrote this. And I need to look this up, but I'm pretty positive 
Paul was in prison when he wrote this. Like this man was in prison and he was still preaching all this truth. And I think that just serves to show that no matter what circumstance you in, God is still worthy of all praise and God can still bless you beyond all understanding. So one of the things I got for my birthday was a bullet journal. And in it, I wrote down just a few of the things that I saw through this like first chapter that really uh, jumped out at me that says who I am in Christ. I put, I am blessed. I am chosen. I'm holy. I'm blameless. I'm adopted. I have purpose. I am redeemed. I am forgiven. I am remembered. I am saved. I am gifted and I am God's workmanship. I thought that this book was so good because I didn't realize, um, that God calls us to be all these things until I truly was studying the word. Like, I don't think if I would have been looking for these things that God says I am, that I would have saw it. But I was intentionally looking for what God says I am because of that movie. But I probably would have just gone right over all those words and just skimmed through it and been like, oh, this is so good and not soaking it in. But guys, these are the things that need to be going to our heart. These things need to be our priority in life. And we need to be living like we know that we are these things. And as a Christian, I think it is our job to make others know that they are these things as well. Everyone in this life is chosen. Everyone in this world has a calling to be something more, to be something greater. Like God has such great plans for your life that it says in the Bible, if he would tell you right now what your plans are, you wouldn't believe him. You would go into shock. You would say, those aren't God's plans for my life. But because he is so good to us, he already knows the path of your life and he already knows what great things he has called you to accomplish. And this also I thought was so good in this book. It says, this is Ephesians 2, 8. For grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not of your own doing, it is a gift of God, not a result of works, so that no one may boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. So nothing I have done makes me worthy of being all these things that Jesus says I am. I am who he says I am because of who God is. I like to think back to that song, um, who you say I am by Hillsong. It says, I am chosen. I am not forsaken. I am who you say I am. You are for me and not against me. I am who you say I am. And those words are just so true. And sometimes it's so hard for Christians just to, and for anyone, quite frankly, just to grasp this concept, this concept that I am chosen, I am holy, I am a workmanship of God after all of the things we have done in our lives, after all the sins we have committed, because everyone sins and falls short of the glory of God. And it's so hard to say, how can I be these things after all that I've done in my life? But the Bible tells us once we accept God's sacrifice and once we choose to be saved that our old self is put to death just like whenever Jesus died our old self is gone but thank you Jesus he resurrected three days later and we have new life that comes up from that we have new life through him and he gives us the opportunity to live for him with our new life and we don't have to even think about those old sins we committed Jesus says he throws our sins as far as the east is from the west he doesn't even see the old self in us right here in Ephesians 4 6 it says one God and father of all who is over all and through all and in all but grace was given to each one of us according to the measure of Christ's gifts therefore it says when he ascended on high he led a host of captives and he gave gifts to men so that just right there proves to serve that God gave each one of us this opportunity just to walk in the light and walk in the goodness and walk in the peace that God has to offer because until you know who God is and accept that you will never have full peace in your heart. You will never be satisfied and have the full satisfaction of who you can be in your because I believe I could never find my full satisfaction who I am because of what I've done but I can find satisfaction and goodness in myself because of what Jesus did for me and for you. Chapter 2 verse 14 says for he himself is our peace who has made us both one and has broken down in his flesh the dividing wall of hostility. So God has taken down those walls in your life. He has break he has broken those chains that are holding you down. Um if you've been on my channel before you saw that I went to SCA camp and that was the most life-changing week I've ever experienced. Um I thought I was just 
I thought I was fine and it was just going to grow my relationship with God. But it literally changed my whole perspective on Christianity. God broke chains in my life that week that I didn't even know Satan had on me. All my, I had so many chains on me about being bold for God, about how could I speak to others when so many other people are better than me and they have such a better way of speaking than me because I get so, so nervous even when I sit down to film. Um, and I get even more nervous whenever I actually speak in front of people. But God told me that I don't have to be nervous in Jesus' name. I don't have to be nervous because of what he's done for me and what he has called me to be. And he can work the same things in your life. You don't have to be who you are now or who you used to be. You can leave that. Jesus died for our sins on the cross for a reason. So we can leave them at the cross. So we don't have to carry that baggage around with us. That is the whole reason that Jesus came. Is so we could just have a better life and live it more abundantly. Uh, Jesus says that I don't know what book that's in but and if you feel like you aren't in your best season right now if you feel like that everything's coming at you from all sides and that you are losing just take heart that the battle's not over because in the end God says that we win guys we're gonna win we're going to heaven um that's how the end of this is gonna turn out so if it doesn't look the best for you just keep your eyes up and keep going because you are gonna come out of this Philippians 1 6 says and I'm sure of this that he who began a good work in you will bring it to completion at the day of Jesus Christ God has a time for everything and I struggle so much with patience in my life whether it be if I'm waiting for my pizza to come out of the oven or whether it be if I'm waiting for a big life event to come um but in this verse it says that if he begins a good work in me, then God's going to finish it. God finishes what he starts and he's going to finish what he starts in you too. One thing I've had to learn is that before I can truly love other people, like truly and purely love others, I have to learn how to love myself. And I don't mean loving my physical self, loving my hair, loving my body. I don't mean that. I mean, those are great things, but I have to love who I am and who God made me. I used to struggle so much with like self image and I just really didn't love myself at all. And then I found out who God has called me to be. And I saw a quote one time and it said like, I think it said, isn't it crazy that the same God that created the galaxies and the oceans and the beautiful sunsets that appear every night looked at you and thought the world needed one of you too. You are not here by mistake. You are not where you are by chance. God has put you where you are for a purpose and a reason. And if God has started that good work in you, then he's going to finish it. But anyway, um, until I realized who I was in Christ, I am chosen. I am fearfully and wonderfully made. God, there is no flaw in me. God made my heart the way it is for a reason. If I don't have enough patience, then God put that in me for a reason. That's going to help me in another season of life so I can pray for Jesus to give me patience. And he will put opportunities in my life to gain patience so I can learn to trust him more. And another thing that I have learned to teach myself is that I will have so many like revelations with the Lord like at FCA camp. And I will be like, from now on, I am not living the way I used to. And that is true, but I'll slowly slip back into my old ways. I'll slowly get back on Instagram and start comparing myself to other people or start looking at things that I shouldn't be looking at. And it's really a daily decision. You have to decide every morning when you wake up, who am I going to live for today? Am I going to live for myself and the world and who society says I should be? Or am I going to live for God and who he says I am? And let me tell you guys something, no matter how you feel God rules over all of it. The creation can't define itself. Creation doesn't define creation, but the creator is the only person who can define the creation. So no matter how you feel about yourself, even though you know who you are, God knows you way better than you could ever know yourself. And only the creator can define the creation. Verse 19 in Philippians 1 says, I know that through your prayers and the help of the Spirit of Jesus Christ, that this will turn out for my deliverance, as it is my eager expectance and hope that I will not be at all ashamed, but that with full courage, now as always, Christ will be honored in my body, whether by life or by death. So God is going to turn your situation around. Um, because in the Bible, it says what Satan intended for evil, my God has intended for good. So God can turn around any situation in your life for good. But I think that, um, you always just have to be in prayer and be trying to do the right thing. Something that I've always struggled with is if I'm not being perfect, 
then I'm doing something wrong. But I realize that there's no way I can be perfect. That as long as I am trying my best, that the hardships will come and the storms will come. But God is going to be there to help me through all of it. The point of being a Christian is not that God will always be there and there are no storms in my life. It's that there are going to be so many storms in my life, but God is there through every storm. And after every storm, there's a rainbow and I'm going to be stronger and better than I was before so I can empower other people so they know the power that God has placed inside of them. I have no idea what all I just said, but I have almost 21 minutes of footage. I hope the video isn't that long, but I hope I got my point across to you guys and that you got something out of this if you're still watching this video. I hope you guys had a fantastic new year. And I'm praying over you right now that 2020 is going to be your best year. That you are just going to be so engulfed in God's love and that you can go spread that to others. And I know this isn't something that people do often, but I just feel led to do it. I want to pray over whoever is watching this right now. Um, feel free to pray with me or just listen, but I just want to say this. Um, dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for the person that is watching this. Thank you so much for their life. Thank you that... You have placed them on this earth for a purpose and that I pray that you would just let them know that they do make a difference in this world, that they they are seen and that they are loved. And I pray that you would just empower them and engulf them in your love right now so that they can do the same to others and that they can feel your presence right now wherever they are in their bedroom or in a room full of people, Lord. I pray that they just know who they are in you and in you alone. And I thank you so much for their life. And I'm excited to see what you're going to do with them. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you guys in my next video. Don't forget to be the reason that someone smiles today. And yeah, I love you guys. Bye.